According to the CDC, six in 10 Americans are living with at least one chronic disease, and this ingredient has been linked to nearly all of them. Today, we're gonna to be talking about high fructose corn syrup and why you need to remove it from your diet today. Now, I'm not the first to cover this, but I don't believe there can ever be too much education on the truth. A quick Google search and you'll see just how many doctors, dietitians, holistic healers, and health enthusiasts alike all agree that high fructose corn syrup is one of the most dangerous ingredients in our food products today. It provides no nutritional benefit. It's been called a fat production factory and it has been linked to nearly all the major health issues that we face in America today. Liver disease, heart disease, diabetes, obesity, cancer. So if it provides no nutritional benefit, why do so many people continue to consume it? The simple answer is ignorance. Most of us don't know or don't care to know anything about the food we consume on a regular basis. But I believe many of us would do better if we actually knew better. I think we just need more education on the products that we introduce to our bodies. And I plan on doing my part to assist in that. So what is high fructose corn syrup? High fructose corn syrup or HFCS is an artificial sweetener commonly found in packaged foods and beverages and it's made from regular corn syrup. So don't confuse it with corn syrup, it is made from corn syrup. So to be clear, although corn syrup and high fructose corn syrup both come from corn, they are not the same thing. To make corn syrup, glucose is extracted from corn and turned into a syrup by using boiling water. So corn syrup is basically liquid glucose. Now, to make it sweeter and more similar to the taste of regular table sugar, sucrose, some of that glucose is converted to fructose using enzymes. So once the conversion of glucose to fructose is complete, you end up with a much sweeter product, high fructose corn syrup. The sweetness level of high fructose corn syrup can be controlled by how much glucose is converted to fructose. This is why there are different types of high fructose corn syrup. HFCS90 is the most concentrated form. It contains 90% fructose. HFCS55 consists of 55% fructose. It's most commonly used for soft drinks and sodas. HFCS42 contains 42% fructose. It's most commonly used in canned fruits, ice cream desserts, and other sweet and processed foods. Both HFCS55 and 42 have similar glucose ratios to table sugar. Table sugar has 50% glucose to 50% fructose. Because the glucose fructose ratios are similar between table sugar and high fructose corn syrup, this leads many people to believe that the effects on the body are the same. But there's evidence to suggest this isn't entirely true. Researchers at Princeton University have proven that high fructose corn syrup causes considerably more weight gain. They discovered that rats that had access to high fructose corn syrup gained significantly more weight than those with access to basic table sugar, even when their overall caloric intake was the same. Right here, when rats are drinking high fructose corn syrup at levels well below those in soda pop, they're becoming obese even when rats are fed a high fat diet, you don't see this. The first study showed that male rats given water sweetened with high fructose corn syrup in addition to a standard diet of rat chow gained much more weight than male rats that received water sweetened with table sugar or sucrose in conjunction with the standard diet. Now get this, the concentration of sugar in the sucrose solution was the same as is found in some commercial soft drinks, while the high fructose corn syrup solution was half as concentrated as most sodas. So based on this study, even though the composition of table sugar and high fructose corn syrup are similar, calorie for calorie high fructose corn syrup is more dangerous than the already harmful refined sugar. So if you thought table sugar was bad, based on this information, high fructose corn syrup is worse. 
to begin with, it has no essential nutrients, zero essential nutrients. So like other added sugars, high fructose corn syrup is empty calories. Empty calories are foods and drinks that are high in calories, but have no essential nutrients. So basically it's a bunch of calories with no real benefit to your health. Eating high fructose corn syrup actually decreases the total nutrient content of your diet because the more high fructose corn syrup you consume, the less space you have for food that contains actual vital nutrients. And the more high fructose corn syrup you consume, the greater the risk for health issues. Many serious diseases have been linked to the overconsumption of fructose. Insulin resistance, which leads to diabetes and obesity, increased liver fat, visceral fat, heart disease, cancer, impaired brain function, hypertension, high cholesterol, high blood pressure, excess uric acid, and even mercury poison. And that's not even all of them. In the US, diabetes began to rise about the same time that high fructose corn syrup started being used more in the food. Whether that correlation equates to causation, not everyone agrees. But according to a study in the PubMed database, nations that use high fructose corn syrup tend to have higher diabetes rates than countries that don't. Countries with high high fructose corn syrup consumption had diabetes rates about 20% higher than countries with low availability of high fructose corn syrup. Results suggest that countries with higher availability of high fructose corn syrup have a higher prevalence of type 2 diabetes independent of obesity. So basically, even when obesity rates are similar, diabetes is still higher in countries that have more high fructose corn syrup available for consumption. Now, is it a coincidence that increased use of high fructose corn syrup in processed foods has correlated with sharp rises in obesity and diabetes? Once again, opinions are mixed. But considering how high fructose corn syrup makes up about 40% of the caloric sweeteners, I would say there's cause for concern. And studies have shown that consuming large amounts of fructose can lead to overeating. Because the body's ability to use insulin is weakened and the body's ability to suppress ghrelin is weakened, which simply means the component in your brain that says, I'm full, now stop eating, is turned off, which leads to eating and overeating. Researchers did two experiments with four groups of rats to determine if a standard diet with high fructose corn syrup added would lead to obesity. Group one was given chow only. Group two had 12 hour access to high fructose corn syrup and chow. Group three had 24 hour access to high fructose corn syrup and chow. And group four had 12 hour access to sucrose and chow. This lasted eight weeks. After eight weeks, male rats with daily 12 hour high fructose corn syrup access gain more weight than rats with equal access to sucrose. Interestingly enough, even though the 12 hour high fructose corn syrup group gained significantly more body weight, they were ingesting fewer calories from high fructose corn syrup than the sucrose group was ingesting from sucrose. Now, experiment two used male and female rats, but they didn't include the sucrose group for the male rats since the effects of sucrose on body weight weren't seen in the first experiment. Now, after six months, the weight gain in the male rats in both high fructose corn syrup groups was significant compared to the child only group. The female rats had similar results after seven months with the 24 hour high fructose corn syrup access group gaining more body weight and more body fat than the sucrose and child only groups. Those are only two experiments, but the results suggest that weight gain and fat accumulation are more strongly influenced by high fructose corn syrup and sucrose, as I touched on before. So not only is weight gain and obesity a factor, it seems that visceral fat is an inevitable consequence of high fructose corn syrup as well. Visceral fat is the most harmful type of body fat because it surrounds your vital organs. A clear sign you're storing this fat is a pot belly. Now, 
This isn't the fat that you can pinch just beneath your skin. Um, the visceral fat is found deeper than that. Like I said, it's gonna be in and around your vital organs. And this is why it's so dangerous. According to another study in the PubMed database, consuming fructose sweetened, not glucose sweetened beverages increases visceral adiposity in lipids and decreases insulin sensitivity in overweight, obese humans. For 10 weeks, overweight and obese subjects drank glucose or fructose sweetened beverages to compare the effects of both sugars on humans. Although both groups exhibited similar weight gain during the intervention, visceral adipose volume was significantly increased only in subjects consuming fructose. So we've already seen examples of fructose causing more harm than sucrose. Now here we see an example of fructose causing more harm than glucose as well. Now another area of concern is the liver. Now the liver's job is to metabolize the fructose and when it gets overloaded that fructose then turns into fat and getting too much fructose can lead to non-alcoholic fatty liver disease this is the most common form of liver disease in the united states and when you have too much fat build up it can lead to liver inflammation liver damage and scarring of the liver and the only way to treat it is through the diet and it's much easier if you get it in the early stages. Now, heart disease and cancer are the number one and number two main causes of death in the U.S. So, how are they linked to high fructose corn syrup? In regards to heart disease, there hasn't been a great amount of studies done to this point, so the opinions vary. But, in a study that compared participants who consumed 10 to 25% or more calories from added sugar, with those who consume less than 10% of calories from added sugar, they found a significant relationship between added sugar consumption and increased risk for cardiovascular disease mortality. Now in this particular study, I'm not exactly sure what added sugar was used, but it seems that added sugar in general, especially in excess, poses a risk to heart health. Now in regards to cancer, High fructose corn syrup does not cause cancer, but it does add to the risk of people with a family history of colon cancer and inflammatory bowel disease. Colorectal cancers use high fructose corn syrup as a source to sustain cell growth and they do it rapidly. So in a sense, high fructose corn syrup is an energy source for cancer cells. Studies have shown that cancer cells reproduce faster with fructose than glucose. So people with a family history of colon or pancreatic cancer need to avoid high fructose corn syrup as much as possible. Now, the last one I'll touch on is high fructose corn syrup's effect on the brain. Wildly enough, it's possibly connected to the development of Alzheimer's disease. According to Dr. Richard Johnson, a professor of medicine, fructose levels are high in the brains of people with early Alzheimer's disease. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a review suggesting that fructose may affect the areas of the brain responsible for reasoning, impulse control, and memory. And a study out of UCLA found that consuming high fructose corn syrup over a long period of time can actually destroy memory and impair your ability to learn. Now that's seven potential serious health risks that this artificial sugar can cause. But the thing is, it's in so many food products that we eat and drink every day. Some of the most common food products that contain high fructose corn syrup are soda, candy, sports drinks, juice, bread, most often white bread, packaged sweets, breakfast cereals, ketchup, barbecue sauce, ice cream and popsicles, pancake syrup, fruit preserves and jams, and even salad dressings. If it's so dangerous, why is it in so many foods? Short answer, money, profit. It first became a popular sweetener in the late 1970s when sugar prices were high and corn prices were low. So it's a lot cheaper than table sugar. It has a long shelf life. It mixes well with a variety of products and it's easily flavored. 
Now in the past, most people only got small amounts of fructose, but that was from natural sources like fruits and vegetables. And what I wanna emphasize is the natural fructose in fruit is both safe and healthy and should not in any way be equated to the dangers of high fructose corn syrup. So yes, excessive fructose from added sugar is unhealthy, but you should not avoid eating fruit. Fruit are whole foods with plenty of fiber, nutrients, and antioxidants. And studies suggest a healthy diet with fruits and vegetables can lower the risk of some chronic diseases such as diabetes, heart disease, stroke, and certain types of cancers. Drinking 100% fruit juice is fine, but it's best to eat the whole fruit. And that way you're getting 100% of the benefits that it has to offer. It's pretty hard to eat too much fructose if you're getting it from the whole fruit. How do I cut down on high fructose corn syrup if it's everywhere? Read the ingredient labels. High fructose corn syrup is sometimes called corn sugar on labels. Choose unsweetened products and sweeten it yourself. Drink less soda and sweeten drinks. Switch to brown or rye bread. White bread typically contains high fructose corn syrup. When possible, always choose products with no added sugar. Choose homemade baked goods over store-bought baked goods. Get more natural sugar from fruit. And choose pure maple syrup over pancake syrup. Now for some sweetener alternatives. Stevia, raw honey, coconut sugar, pure maple syrup, and dates are some of the safer alternatives. But in reality, no added sugar is great regardless of the source. Now for the great news. The consumption of high fructose corn syrup has declined over the years. You can now see products with high fructose corn syrup free alternatives or some of these companies are just ditching it all together. And this just goes to show that if you properly educate people and give them options, many people will make the healthier choice. According to the American Heart Association, research suggests that 77% of people are striving for less sugar in their diets and seven in 10 consumers are willing to give up their favorite sugary product in favor of a healthier option. Now that does seem a little hard to believe when you look at the rates of some of our chronic diseases in the United States, but I do believe people would eat healthier with the proper education and the proper understanding of how your diet affects more than just the physical. The emotional, mental, and spiritual are impacted as well. It starts with knowledge and taking that first step in the right direction. So if six in 10 Americans are living with at least one chronic disease, that's just at least one. I believe the number is 40% have two or more. That's, that's nuts to me. So if six out of 10 have at least one, what does that say about your odds if you continue to eat the standard American diet? Why not just start with ditching the high fructose corn syrup? If you made it to the end, I appreciate you for watching and I would much appreciate that like and that subscribe and follow me on this journey. Thank you.